Hey, what's going on everybody? To London Reed Filmmaker here, where the answers come first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. So last time I reviewed the Great Joy 50mm anamorphic lens with a 1.8 squeeze. And of course the natural question is, how does it compare against the Surays? Obviously I don't have the Surays here right in front of me, but I do have some hands-on experience with them, as a couple months ago I was on the same short film set as the fellow friend of this channel, Nate's Film Tutorials. Now the project was specifically shot with the Surrey 50mm and the 75mm, so I do have some hands-on with it. Nate being the DP, rented out those lenses, and I actually brought my Great Joy with me because he was curious how does it actually compare between the two? So in this video, what I want to do is talk about the main differences that you need to consider before deciding which one of these lenses you should purchase. And I will say that at the filming of this video, Surrey just recently announced their 35 and the 100 millimeter, as well as an adapter that allows the lenses to essentially be a 2x squeeze. So we'll keep that in mind. Without further ado, these are the things you need to think about. Both lenses can be mounted to various mirrorless cameras. The main difference is that Greyjoy can be mounted to a Micro Four Thirds, while Surrey can be mounted to a Nikon Z. If you're using a cinema camera with a PL or EF mount, Greyjoy is your only option. Both companies offer various focal lengths that are crucial for a filmmaker. Surrey currently is offering the most options, while Greyjoy has only announced plans for three primary focal lengths. The anamorphic squeeze ratios are different between the lenses. Surrey's maximum squeeze at infinity is 1.6, while the Great Joy is 1.8. When we specifically talk about the 50mm lenses, both companies do not have a consistent squeeze when you do a close-up shot. The Surrey you end up with a 1.51x squeeze, and the Great Joy is around a 1.62. Here in this example, you can tell the difference by the bokeh balls in the back. Now, Greyjoy has announced that their 35mm will have a consistent squeeze. Not sure about the 85mm at the moment, but as far as I can tell, all of Surrey's anamorphic lenses do not maintain a squeeze natively unless you use their new front-end adapter to get that 2x squeeze, in which case it acts like a variable diopter, allowing you to maintain that squeeze. Looking at the optical differences between the lenses, the Surrey has much more saturation and punchy contrast, compared to Greyjoy, which looks more neutral. You can tell based on Nate's skin tone as well as his beard. Lastly is the flares. The Surrey produces a strong rectangular type of primary flare with a very strong ghost flare. The Great Joy, on the other hand, produces a more tapered streak primary flare with a subtle ghost flare depending on your situation. If you're looking for flares, the Surrey flares a bit easier than the Great Joy. If you look above Nate's head, you can see the window blinds producing a flare. And on the short film, we actually had some low power Christmas lights hung pretty far away from the lens, but yet you can actually still see it flare. The Greyjoy, on the other hand, you can only see it for a very split second on my head, and even then it's hard to see in motion, whereas the Surrey is very clear and present. Before I get to my suggestions, I do want to say one last thing that you need to consider about Surrey. There's a little rumor going on here, and I'm wildly speculating, but the rumor is, is that next year is when they start slowly releasing a 2X anamorphic set. Now, currently you have the 1.6 with the adapter, uh, screw-on adapter, that can get you to a 2X, but the rumor is, is that next year they're gonna do specific 2X lenses. Now, the one thing is, the current lineup of Surrey's anamorphics, all of us have been saying, where is the EF mount version? Where is the PL mount version? Why have you not done this? And they just kind of skirt around the question, being like, oh, we'll consider it, or we thought about it, or something like that. Well, here's what I think is actually going to happen if this rumor is true. I think this 2X version that they're coming out with, specifically, um, I think that is gonna finally give us the PF and EF mount versions, but, I will further speculate that they're just gonna do away with mirrorless mounts like altogether. Because in my opinion, it does not make sense for you to make all these mirrorless mount versions that might not sell. So all these optics are just sitting there being wasted. What makes a lot more sense is if they make a PL mount version and then they also release a series of really robust adapters that allow people to go to an EF mount, uh, E-mount, e MFT, you know, all the different mirrorless mounts possible. It makes the most sense in terms of material and cost. So that is my wild speculation that next year we might see something like that. But with all that out of the way, which lens 
between the Great Joy or the Saray 1.6 Anamorphics, which ones do I recommend? So for me personally, I feel like the Great Joy currently is the best value because it's the most future proof. You can go to any camera you want in the future, no problem, just get yourself some adapters, you'll be good to go. In terms of its optical quality, I feel like I love the idea that it doesn't have a super punchy contrast and overly sharp optics because to me as a narrative filmmaker, it makes more sense. And it still can make sense for commercial work as well, and specifically because it doesn't flare very easily. And when it does, it's nice, pleasing, very thin streaks. If you want to add more saturation, you can do that. If you want to give it a little bit of sharpness, you can do that. So I feel like the Great Joy currently is the most versatile as well as the most future-proof out of the bunch. Now the winning points for Saray is that they're probably always going to be a little bit more cheaper because they are using mirrorless mounts only and they're not going to the EF and PL specifically with this setup. And in which case it does kind of stink that you can't jump between mirrorless mounts with a simple adapter, but there is one company that if you're in, or specifically you're thinking about going to, Sony is probably the winner when it comes to mirrorless mounts in my opinion. And that's because their cinema cameras, their prosumer cameras, their total budget consumer cameras all use the same E mount and that's it. Whereas Panasonic, which undoubtedly is the best when it comes to being behind the camera and pretty much the best filmmaking tool camera out there, they're all over the place. Some of their cameras use EF mount, some of them use micro four thirds, and some of them use L mount, which means you can't just use this lens on all of these cameras. That is a kind of a disappointment on Panasonic. Anyways, I digress. So that's the winner here. If you're gonna go with a mirrorless mount specifically, I would say go with a Sony because you have the best options in terms of future camera upgrades. Otherwise, um, I would say the L mount is probably a very good one specifically with their prosumer camera lineups. When it comes to the optical quality and what you get, 1.6 is more than enough to get an anamorphic look. The saturation, the sharpness, the punchiness of the contrast, I feel like these are all great things out of the gate for commercial work, Instagram work, what have you. If you're gonna try to pull some of that away, you're gonna have to do a little bit to in post as well as in front of the lens to kind of tone it down. But I feel like for commercial work, it is rock solid. In terms of its flare characteristics, this is kind of a make or break for you because if you don't want your flares showing up all the time, then the Sarays are probably not the best pick for you. But if your specific work and your specific vision wants those flares, then get the Saray because those are going to pop up right where you want it, when you want it, and you don't have to be super purposeful about it. It will be there. So. That is pretty much it between the two. I personally have gone with a great joy because I want that future proofness and I'm okay with it not being the punchiest, the super sharpest, and of course the um, flares. I don't mind about that. However, in the future with this 2X coming from Surrey, if they come out with an EF and PL mount version, I'll be very curious to see what the optics are like and then determine do I want to invest in those lenses? Because if there's one last thing I want to say about Saray as a company is they are pretty much in the forefront of budget anamorphics. They had a really good head start and they are just pumping out these lenses left and right. Great Joy started, I think, a little bit last year approximately, and they're slowly ramping themselves up to be a company that can fight in the optical space. And of course, I feel like there's more to be coming. Viltrox just announced their 1.33 anamorphics for show. I don't know when it's coming out and whether or not it's a front or rear anamorphic. That seems to be the chat of the town here. But anyways, anamorphics are coming. Saray is leading the pack in terms of what they offer. So be very curious to see what they do in the future. Anyways, that is a rant. I will see you guys in the next one. If this video has been super helpful, I do have affiliate links down below for all these lenses. Should you use them, it does help support the channel and I thank you for that. Otherwise, leave a question or a comment down below. I will get to them as fast as I can. And before this thing gets roaring here, like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Think about in terms of what are the differences between
They really just go onto your camera and there's an airplane. It's future proof out of the bunch. But let's say that, I have no idea what that is. Is that a lawnmower? No, it's a tractor. Ha, <laughs> blooper.